What's up, my wizards? Dev from SBMTG, the place down there. We usually talk about deck techs, but sometimes we just talk about magic because that's important too. There is some information that I definitely think needs to be shared. Not a day goes by, um, either in real life, through my Gmail, or in the comments section of a video, where I don't address, um, and other YouTube channels, other magic channels have this problem too. Um, people who say, you know, well these cards are already rotated out, or you know, this this will have, you know, a, a lot of rotation questions. I'll just leave it at that. A lot of rotation issues. So, this video is for a few different things. Um, a lot of things, you know, something for everybody here. Uh, so what I'm going to do at the beginning here of this video is I'm going to explain not only uh, when Theros Block and M15 rotate, because they are in fact not rotated out yet, um, but I will also explain, because I think that a lot of people do not know this yet, um, but sort of how the rotation schedule works from then on for the next year or so. Um, because I think that's very important, and I think it's information that a lot of people don't necessarily have yet, or haven't, you know, needed to find yet, because it's something that's six months in the future, but it will be very, very important. So, I'm going to touch on that. I'm also going to uh, talk about all the stuff that we're losing when these sets rotate out, and uh, sort of what might get stronger, or weaker, for that matter, when these sets rotate out. All with the caveat that we have no idea what's going to be in Battle for Zendikar, so there is that. But um, yeah, here are the different times for things, if you want to skip ahead in the video to whatever interests you the most, so there is that. Um, take some time, there it is, if you want to click on it, probably don't click on it, if you just want to go to that time. Do it now, I've given you plenty of time. First of all, Rotation. Well, Theros and M15 do not rotate out until Battle for Zendikar comes out. So until then, play with Theros and M15 to your heart's content. You'll still be having to deal with Corsair of Crufix and Hero's Downfall, all, a lot of different stuff. <laughs> There's more things than I can name Goblin Rabble Master at your F and M, you know, whatever at your at your events. But they don't rotate out until October. Now, Wizards is moving. This is important to a two block. Uh, to set block structure. Um, basically, there's usually three sets in a block. Now, there's going to be two sets in every block, and they're going to be both big sets instead of a big set and two small sets. Um, lots of interesting things happen because of this. Uh, for instance, Dragons of Tarkir and Magic Origins do not, do not rotate out with Cons of Tarkir and Favor Forge. Cons and, Tar Tar uh, Cons and Favor Forge, they rotate out first and then, later, Dragons of Tarkir and Magic Origins rotate out. They are, for the purposes of the new rotation, their own separate block in and of themselves. Um, so what's going to happen is Cons of Tarkir and Favorite Forge will rotate out in spring of 2016. Um, basically, Battle for Zendikar comes out in October, and um, Theros and M15 rotate out. And then we'll get another set in that block, the other big set, all right? And then when spring comes, probably March, April, early April, late March, in there somewhere, um, that is when the next block will come in and Cons and Favor Forge will rotate out. Dragons of Tarkir and Magic Origins will rotate out that coming, that next October. So if you're on the same page here, that means that there are effectively going to be two rotations every year instead of the standard one rotation a year, which will be slightly interesting and hard to keep up with for some players, but it may help drive prices down or up. There's a lot of different speculation going on about that, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, but it'll also keep things very fresh and, as Wizard says, allowed them to sort of keep things more cohesive um, maybe not for longer, but definitely keep things more cohesive within the block structure itself. We'll still get the same amount of sets every year. We're used to getting a big set, two small sets, and a core set. Now we'll just get four big sets a year. So, same amount of sets, basically the same amount of cards. Um, so there is that, and that's pretty cool. Um, but things are going to rotate a little quicker than we're used to, so there is that. I know a lot of players hate rotation. Um, so that's the sort of rotation structure from here on out, and that kind of sucks for some people, and some people are really excited about it. So, got about a year and you know, four, about 14 months to play with DTK and Magic Origins until that rotates out. So the new structure can be slightly confusing. Let me know if you have any questions or anything in the comments. I will have a link 
to all of this information in the description, so check that out if you want to as well. Now, moving on, let's talk about some of the things that we're losing. I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible. A lot of information. Talk about some of the things that we're losing when Theros and M15 rotate out. I'll do it by the color, and I'm going to start with black. Forgive me for not uh, using the actual images of the cards here, because, I mean, we've been playing with these cards for two years, we mostly know what they do, and even if you don't know what they do, they're rotating out in two months, so who cares? Um, <laughs> skip ahead. <laughs> First of all, in black, black loses some key pieces, including Thoughtseize, Hero's Downfall, Whip of Erebos, Bow Blight, Grey Merchant Gary, that sucks, and then of course Drowning Sorrow. There are some other things that black loses, and you'll see that trend in other colors. These are just what I think the most impactful cards um, that black is losing are, and especially Heroes Downfall, especially Thoughtseize, to staple cards for black, but I don't think black is, is bad necessarily post-rotation, again, barring BFZ, and what's in that. Um, it depends on if there's a really good removal piece in that set, but black does keep some interesting things, especially Languish, Ultimate Price sticks around, so black still has some good things, and some very good creatures. Erebos' Titan is a reason to play black, so there's that. Um, so, I think that black does, again, lose some very important cards in the format. I don't know how that will affect things like Abzan, blue-black control, you know, we'll have to see. Abzan losing um, sort of Hero's Downfall, but mostly Thoughtseize, it's kind of a hit, but Abzan will be a thing until Siege Rhino rotates, I think we can all agree. Um, next, I'm going to do green. I think green definitely loses the most, but still has so much at its disposal. Um, green Loses, obviously, Corsair of Crufix, Sylvan Carry added, the two biggest cards it loses, I think. Um, Seder Wayfinder, that's in so much stuff, that facilitates so many different kinds of decks. Hornet Queen, Arbor Colossus, sort of B-tier creatures that are important. Genesis Hydra and Pelucranos, sort of the same tier as those two. Elvish Mystic, which I think if there's a card on this list that is very, 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 very likely to be reprinted in Battle for Zendikar, it's Elvish Mystic, or some iteration of Elvish Mystic. I think there, there's, there's just almost no way that they'll let this go. Although, maybe we'll get like Elves of Deep Shadow, or maybe Naru Trapper is supposed to be our new Elvish Mystic. I like Narls Barkley, but I doubt... I mean, he's no Elvish Mystic. <laughs> Not at all. Um, not at all. <laughs> so, these are all, like, super, super important cards, especially Corsair of Crufix, which I think, and Sylvan Carry added those two cards, when they leave, I think that'll facilitate sort of a rise in aggro, which I think there there's a trend towards that anyway, which I will get to a little bit later, but I do think especially the loss of these two cards uh, makes green decks just not as defensive on the whole, and it sucks playing aggro to have to try to get through um, Sylvan Carry added, and especially Corsair of Crufix when it comes down. Huge freaking headache, so glad that it's gone. Thank you for being here, Gorser Crufix. You can get out now. Um, red Red loses some key cards, especially the loss of Storm Breath Dragon is sort of a huge blow to the entire format. You know, Dragon decks are a huge important thing right now, and Ojutai and maybe Silengar, they'll stay strong, but the loss of Storm Breath Dragon may hurt Red Dragon decks a fair amount. Of course, we still have Thunderbreak Region, and Avaricious Dragon may come into his own, but Avaricious Dragon does in no way does he compare to Stormbreath Dragon, so I, I hate that we lose this card. Um, Lightning Strike, although I, again, think this something will like this will be reprinted very very likely in battle for zendikar um goblin rabble master we lose that and that will suck for red aggro a lot especially goblins so play goblins while you can because i really don't know how that deck is going to react to the loss of goblin rabble master very very important card um stoke the flames we lose another thing that tokens decks just really have a hard time functioning without something like this. It's a very important card for those decks, so without Goblin Rabble Master and Stoke the Flames, that combo of losing that just really hurts Mono Red Aggro a lot. Um, and we lose Anger of the Gods, which is a little less important, but still important, especially in sideboards. And blue doesn't lose so much, but it loses some important stuff. Dissolve, probably the biggest thing that blue loses, I would say, although it loses some important creatures like Master of the Waves and Thassa. These, especially Master of the Waves, very important for sort of blue aggro decks. We'll see if they remain a thing with things like Harbinger of the Tide, Stratus Dancer. There's still important cards. Silengar Sorcerer, Fairy Mystery. There's still cards for that deck, but I just don't know if it'll be as strong without things like Thassa, especially Master of the Waves. 
Um, Nullify it loses, and that's sort of important too, but in the end, Blue doesn't lose a ton of stuff that it just cannot live without. There's probably going to be some sort of hard counter replacement for Dissolve, and it might, we might even see Dissolve again. I would not be surprised with Scry as an evergreen ability now to see this card pop back up in BFC or something very close after that. So, I don't think we've seen the last of the Dissolve is all I'm saying. Um, on to White, which has a fairly long card, a list of cards that it loses, but I think White still comes out very, very well at the end of the day. White loses Elspeth, God's Willing. Maybe the most important card White loses is God's Willing. A Johnny's Presence, which I think has dimmed in value a bit since Language became a thing. Um, Banishing Light, which is an important card. Brimaz, which is good, but we don't play it as much as we used to. Chained to the Rocks, same as Brimaz, just this, we don't play it as much as we used to. Hero of Heroes and Favorite Hoplite will just kill heroic decks. As a matter of fact, loss of heroic will kill heroic decks. But I mean, white decks love favorite hoplite especially. Um, and Sphere of Heliod, another sort of B-tier card that white is losing. And again, white's losing more than this, and that's a lot of cards to be losing. But really, the only thing it's really affected by is the loss of God's Willing. That's going to kill some decks. And obviously, heroic is gone forever too, but I'm not really complaining about that. We can get back to sort of a more traditional white aggro, which is cool. Um, so yeah, that's what all the colors lose. Let's go ahead and also do Golden Artifact real quick here. We lose not a ton. We lose Gods, which kind of sucks. The biggest thing maybe that we lose is uh, probably maybe Xenagos the Reveler for um, those decks. But I think that the Green Red Devotion is probably probably not going to be a thing. I mean, obviously Devotion won't be a thing after rotation, but those big green ramp decks might still because of things like Nissa. I just I smell a ramp deck in BFC because you know. Zendikar. <laughs> and look at Nyssa, you know, that just... I smell a ramp deck, so maybe those decks will still be a thing. Green ramp decks. Um, we lose Perilous Vault, which is... Uh, uh, we'll see how much that affects things. I think that's the only big mass removal that we lose. We lose Obelisk of Erd, which could hurt some, especially sort of FNN level um, aggro decks. Uh, we lose Ashiok and a Johnny Mentor of Souls, which is meh. And then the biggest thing, I think, maybe, I mean, I'm sure that I'm missing something. I just feel like I'm missing something. You guys let me know. But I think one of the biggest things we lose is uh, Fleece Mate Lion. Fleece Mate Lion, that, that sucks to lose that a lot for these sort of um, Abzan or Green White aggro decks. That, that's a very, very important card, and I love Fleece Mate Lion, too. Um, also, quickly, I'll touch on this. Red Green decks lose Destructed Revelry out of the sideboard, which is actually a fairly important card for them. Although, you know, enchantments won't be as much of a thing once the Eros rotates out, so maybe we won't need Revelry as much, but that is an important card, to say the least, for their sideboards. Um, so, now, let's talk a little bit about... <laughs> I hope we're breezing through. I don't know if this is taking 40 minutes or what. But in any case, let's talk a little bit about um, what I think the format might, might be like um, after Theros and M15 rotate. Now, again, barring the fact that we, we don't know anything about what's going to be in BFC, uh, so that, that's, that could completely change all of this. Do not get me wrong, but this is sort of what I think we're trending towards, if, if, for what it's worth. First of all, I should go ahead and say this, Ultimate Price might get a little bit worse as we see a lot of the important monocolored creatures leave the format. Don't get me wrong, still some, you know, Death Mist is a thing, Den Protector, there's a hundred monocolored creatures that are important in the format, don't get me wrong, but we also lose, you know, Goblin Ravel Master, Corsair of Crufix, and just a ton of other stuff, you know, Stormbright Dragon is a thing, um, lots of creatures in Theros Block and M15 that are monocolored because it really, other than the gods, wasn't, you know, a, a set focused so much on a multicolored like Khan's block is. So there's that to consider, and conversely, Radiant Purge might get better, um, because, you know, again, we'll move into a block that really focuses heavily on multicolor, so there's that to consider too. Um, I think that we're seeing the rise of three casting costs or less creatures coming up here soon, as maybe removal gets a little bit worse, well again, we'll have to see what happens in October, but removal looks like it might get slightly worse, ultimate price and hero's downfall, so bile blight, you know, especially black removal. So we may see the rise of creature-based decks, which we've already seen a good bit of, but especially without removal, there's going to be a lot of, you know, zoo and blitz and stuff like that, maybe. We've also got collected company, that's in Dragons for Tar of Tarkir, so it's going to be here for another 14 months, I think a lot 
lot more decks, even more so than now, will be focused on collected company and smaller creatures. Maybe we'll see the rise of things like Alesha, um, Yasova, Dragonclaw. I think that's, an, that's a pretty cool card and actually has seen some play in a winning team or aggro deck just a couple of weeks ago. So she's actually becoming a thing that's sort of important. So um, we may hopefully, I think, see the rise of these sort of smaller, almost sort of mid-range aggro creature-based decks, which Magic has been trending towards for a while now. Let me know how you feel about that. I know that that's polarizing. Um, so there is that. I think that's the biggest thing to take away from the, the whole thing, actually, is if, if premium removal isn't replaced, um, especially with collected company in the format, things could get crazy quick with, you know, two and three color aggro really dominating the format. We'll see about monocolored. I'm not entirely convinced, although we'll have Dragon Fodder, Hordling Outburst, even Foundry Street Denizen in the format for quite some time. We've still got Lightning Berserker and all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, Goblin Pile Driver's a thing, uh, Subterranean Scout. I can keep going, actually. Goblin Glory Chaser. So, Modern Red Aggro is still fine, but probably not the dominating force that it was with, especially with Stoke the Flames. Losing that card sucks. But in any case, there's that. Um, I think Green Black Elves gets even better than it is right now. It has been placing sort of 6th and 7th in a lot of tournaments, you know, SEG Opens, Invitationals, TCGs. So there is that. But I think that Green Black Elves gets even better, especially, again, removal out of the format. Um, depends on if Elvish Mystic is reprinted in BFZ, but that the deck doesn't absolutely require Elvish Mystic. It's good to have, you know, Narwhal Trapper. That's a thing. Um, and if we get Elves of Deep Shadow, I think that'll be a thing. I think we'll definitely get a one mana cost mana producing Elf. Just heard it here first. <laughs> but anyway, I think the Green Black Elves, one way or the other, will probably rise to be the standard, the dominant aggro deck in standard, depending, don't get me wrong, I think Goblins gets a little worse just because no Rabble Master and no Stoke the Flames is such a huge blow to that deck. Um, I think Commands and Charms might get even better, um, especially Commands. Dromoka's Command is awesome, and Atarka's Command is freaking awesome. So there's that to consider, too. I think those cards only get better as the format rotates here. Um, I think that White, obviously, like I said before, has things that rotate, but it remains strong because Stormbreath Dragon, a huge bugaboo for White, will rotate out of the format. Um, and it gets Celestial Flare, which is pretty cool. Swift Reckoning. Very important card, I think, for white and may facilitate blue-white control as a Jutai might get a little bit stronger. Again, as maybe removal rotates out, um, some premium removal. But again, blue-white control gets, you know, it gets to keep in hostilities in the format. That's cool. It gets Radiant Purge, which only gets better. It gets, you know, maybe loses Dissolve, but it will probably get a hard counter. It's got so much stuff right now, and, you know, obviously... Having Celestial Flare is awesome. Not having to worry about Stormbreath Dragon is really, really cool. So I think Blue-White Control might be a thing, especially as Esper and um, Blue-Black Control, a dominant deck for the last couple of months, loses important cards like Drown and Sorrow, Thoughtseize, Heroes Downfall, yada, yada, yada. Although, does have Languish. <laughs> so can't ever count out Languish. Warriors might finally be a thing. Now, Warriors does not lose that much at all. It didn't play that much removal out of black to begin with, you know, we've still got Duress, I believe, so that's a thing if you want to play that out of the board, but didn't play that much removal to begin with, and we've got all the Warriors from Khan's Block and Ford still in the format, so either Orzhov Warriors or even Mardu Warriors, or people are talking about um, Junk Warriors, Abzan Warriors, might even be a thing, and I'm sort of starting to jump on that train too, that's a good deck, but I do think especially Mardu and, um, you know, uh, other, especially Black White Warriors, might actually finally become a thing and be good <laughs> in, in the rotated format. I really hope so. And to that effect, Mardu, I think, is still good, even though, again, Black loses some removal. We still get to keep Languish if we want to play it. And we keep cards like Crackling Doom. We have good dragons. We can play Foul Tongue Invocation. Mardu is still a fine deck, I think. And we, we still have, like, Utter End. That's a good card and might even get better when the format rotates. Because, again, no Stormbreath Dragon. The format might sort of focus on two and three mana cost creatures, not very super fast creatures, you know, we'll have to wait and see about that, but in any case, the format might get one turn slower than aggro formats usually are, but still be a very creature-rich format. That'll be very interesting, and cards like Languish will be important in a format like that. Um, and in Hostilities, you know, things like that, mass removal that we do have will be very important, um, because again, creatures will be so good. 
Um, I think that almost is everything I have to say. Honestly, have I said it all? That was really much faster than I thought. You know, one more thing. I will say one more thing. Green decks. People are saying green decks won't be as prominent because Corsair Crufix, Sylvan Carry added is gone. You know, we lose a lot of our big creatures, Polychronos, even Elvish Mystic. Maybe, but Green still has Den Protector, a very important card. Death Miss Raptor, the aforementioned Coco, which is just maybe possibly one of the best cards in the format after it rotates, and even right now, and it's an important card in modern. Coco is really good, and only gets better when the format rotates, I think. Um, especially, you know, Nissa is going to be really good. All the Planeswalkers in Origins cost you know, less than, they cost Collected Company Mana, which is awesome. <laughs> so, and I think the Origins Planeswalkers might even get better, you know, four out of five of them see play already. Chandra is a little late to the party, but especially if removal isn't so heavy, you know, we might get to see Chandra actually play the game. And I think in Mono Red Burn, which could be a thing depending on if we get good, re especially good replacement for Stoke. Um, Lightning Strike, I'm almost sure we'll get a replacement for. But if... Chandra might be able to do a thing. I'm really, I'm crossing my fingers for Chandra. Really hope that she's good enough. <laughs> but four to five of the Planeswalkers already see play, and I think they only get better, especially things like Liliana, because we're going to have things like Nantuko Husk in the format forever. There's that to consider. Um, but anyway, that's, I think that's all I have to say as far as that's concerned. Just one more thing before I go here. Um, two things, actually. First of all, real quick, is it too late for a Magic Origins Top 10? We've been really slow with that. We've been wanting to do it, but it's just been, we've been so many exciting deck techs. So is it too late for a Magic Origins Top 10? And exciting announcement, so I hope you stuck around. Exciting announcement. I've got a new series that I'm brewing up in my head. I've already got like three decks made for this. This is a new series I want to do, $10 decks, and some of them will cost you less than $10. I know how important budget decks are, even though lately I've been getting a lot of calls for non-budget decks, which is pretty cool, but I know people love budget decks too. So I'm thinking about doing a $10 deck series, just quick deck text, maybe you know, 10 minutes or less, no intro, and um, just talking about, you know, the first one I want to do is Green White Renown, because I think especially after um, rotation that deck becomes very good, and with just a couple of bucks you can spice it up with Dramocus Command, which is just ridiculous card, um, <laughs> and some other things. So let me know how you feel about that. I'm really excited to bring that to you if you're excited for it. My name is Dev. If you like the content, please, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Always good to hear from you. And when you like us, it's just like, it makes, it's the best feeling in the world when we see those likes. So, and the comments. Thank you for all the new subscribers. Yada, yada, yada. You guys are awesome. My name's Dev from SVMTG. Thank you, you, for watching, my wizards.